to the arrival of the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Governor Nefile, and the deputy governors. Um, good evening, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let, I want to thank you for honoring our invitation to, to the Central Bank of Nigeria for this very, very brief press conference. The purpose of this conference is to address the purported management changes at the First Bank of Nigeria Limited. The media has been awash with commentaries on the purported management changes at First Bank of Nigeria Limited and the related regulatory inquiry by the Central Bank of Nigeria to the board of First Bank of Nigeria Limited. It has therefore become necessary for us to address the press and members of the public to address any misconceptions. Ordinarily, the board of a bank is vested with the authority to make changes in the management team subject to Central Bank of Nigeria's approval. That is, the board of a, of a bank where CBN has no forbearance or any form of intervention, has the right to make any changes in its management and after such changes apply to the Central Bank of Nigeria for its approval and no objection. However, the CBN considers itself a key stakeholder in management changes involving First Bank of Nigeria due to the forbearances and close monitoring by the bank over the last five years aimed at stemming the slide in the going concern status of First Bank. It was therefore surprising for the Central Bank of Nigeria to learn through the media reports that the Board of Directors of First Bank of Nigeria Limited, a systemically important bank under regulatory forbearance regime, had effected sweeping changes in executive management without engagement and or prior notice to the regulatory authorities. The action by the Board of First Bank of Nigeria sends a negative signal to the market on the stability of leadership on the board and management, and it is in the light of the foregoing that the Central Bank of Nigeria decided to query the board of directors on the unfortunate development at this bank. As you may be aware, FBN is one of the systemically important banks in the Nigerian banking sector, given its historical significance, having, just, having been established in 1894, 127 years ago, its strong balance sheet size, large customer base, and high level of interconnectedness with other financial service providers in Nigeria, among others. By our last assessment, ladies and gentlemen, First Bank of Nigeria had over 31 million customers with deposit base of over 4.2 trillion Naira shareholders' funds of 600 and 618 billion Naira and NIB's instant payment processing capacity of 22% of the industry. To us at the CBN, not only is it imperative to protect the minority shareholders that have no voice to air their views about what happens in this 
in this bank. Also important is the protection of over 31 customers of this bank who see First Bank of Nigeria as a safe haven for their hard-earned savings. The bank maintained healthy operations up until 2016 financial year when the CBN's target examination revealed that the bank was in grave financial condition with its capital adequacy ratio and non-performing loans ratio substantially breaching acceptable prudential standards. The problems at the bank were attributed to bad credit decisions, significant and non-performing insider loans, and poor corporate governance practices. The shareholders of the bank and the First Bank Nigeria holding PLC also lacked the capacity to recapitalize the bank to minimum requirements. Indeed, these conclusions arose from various entities by the Central Bank of Nigeria to them to recapitalize this bank. The CBN stepped in to, step in to, stepped in to stabilize the bank in its quest to maintain financial stability, especially given First Bank of Nigeria's systemic importance as enumerated earlier. Regulatory action taken by the CBN in this regard to stabilize the bank include, one, change of management team under the CBN supervision with the appointment of a new managing director and chief executive officer in January 2016, who was now purportedly removed without our approval. Two, grant of the regulatory forbearances to enable the bank to work out its non-performing loans through provision of, for write-off of at least 150 billion naira from its earnings for four consecutive years. Three, grant of concession to insider borrowers to restructure their non-performing credit facilities under very stringent conditions. Four, renewal of the forbearances on a yearly basis between 2016 and 2020, following thorough monitoring of progress towards exiting from the forbearance measures. The measures had yielded the expected results as the financial condition of this bank improved progressively between 2016 when the forbearance was initially granted to the current financial year. Indeed, from 2016, the bank was precluded from paying dividend we, the central bank ensured that proper governance was being monitored and it's very unfortunate that we are where we are today. We haven't worked so hard to get the bank to a strong status today, now ready to play its role as a leading financial institution. We were jolted by the decision of yesterday. For instance, the profitability, liquidity, capital adequacy ratio of this bank improved while non-performance loans ratio reduced significantly. Notwithstanding the significant improvement in the bank's financial condition with positive trajectory of financial soundness indicators, the insider, in this case, these insider-related facilities had remained problematic. The insiders who took loans in the bank with controlling influence on the board of directors failed to adhere to the terms for the restructuring of their credit facilities which contributed to the poor financial state of this bank. The CBN's recent target examination as of December 31, 2020 revealed that insider loans were, were materially non-compliant with the terms of the restructure. 
For example, non-perfection of lien on shares and collateral arrangements that CBN had insisted on for over three years despite several regulatory reminders. The bank has not also divested its non-permissible holdings in non-financial entities in line with regulatory directives. Following further review of the situation and in order to preserve the stability of the bank so as to protect minority shareholders and depositors, the management of the Central Bank of Nigeria, in line with its powers conferred on it by the banks and other financial institutions Act 2020, has approved and hereby direct as follows. One, immediate removal of all the directors of First Bank of Nigeria Limited and First Bank of Nigeria Holdings PLC. Two, the appointment of the following persons as directors in First Bank of Nigeria Limited and First Bank of Nigeria Holdings PLC. For the whole co, one chairman will be Remy Babalola. Two, Dr. Fata De Abiodunlu Ole. Three, Kufo Dosekun. Four. Remy Lasaki. Five, Dr. Alimi Abdurazak. Six, Alaji Ahmed Mudibu. Seven, Alaji Khalifa Imam. Eight, Mr. Peter Aliogu. Nine, Uke A.K. Managing Director. For the bank, we will now have from today chairman as Tunde Hassan Udukale. Two, Tukumbo Martins. Three, Uche Nwokeidi. Four, Adekunle Shonola. Five, Isioma Ogodazi. Six, Ebeniza Ulufuwushi. Seven, Ishaya Elijah Dodo. 8. Dr. Shola Ade Duntan, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer. 9. Benga Shobo, Deputy Managing Director. 10. Remy Oni, Executive Director, we understand, had just been appointed Chairman of PENCOM and has proceeded on terminal retirement or terminal leave, so we will expect that this board will fill this vacancy shortly. 11. Abdullahi Ibrahim, Executive Director. The CBN hereby reassures the depositors, creditors, and other stakeholders of the bank of its commitment to ensure the stability of the financial system. There is therefore no cause for panic amongst the banking public or important stakeholders given that the actions being taken by the CBN are meant to strengthen the bank and position it as a banking giant in Nigeria. I thank you for your attention. The second question before the first. Um, like we said, this decision came to us as a surprise. Like we said, this bank has been under regulatory forbearance intervention since 2016. The truth is that, yes, even before we, we, we issued a query yesterday to the chairman of the board, copy to all the directors and, sh and major shareholders, um, the attempt or initial attempt to remove the managing director, Dr. Shola Adedunton, was, um, was leaked to me by an interested party in the course of the board meeting. When I heard about this, I had cause first to call the chairman of the holding company, 
Mr. Oba Otudeko. I, he picked my call. I reminded him about the regulatory intervention and forbearance regime in the bank and that the decision to make such sweeping changes would require prior approval of the Central Bank of Nigeria. I pleaded with him to step down the decision and that we could hold a meeting to discuss the issues. Given that the current managing director was, was running on a tenure that is expected to expire on December 31, 2020. And that as far as we are concerned, and 2021, and as far as we are concerned, there was no need for such changes. I repeat, based, given our regulatory intervention and forbearance regime, we felt that if there was any misconduct on the part of Dr. Dr. Shola Ade Dunton, that he should have been queried, the central bank should have been informed, and the central bank should have been party to such an action to punish Dr. Ade Dunton. We were not informed of any misconduct, neither were we informed of any query. Indeed, the Central Bank of Nigeria has been satisfied working with Dr. Ade Dunton on a stabilization regime for First Bank since 2016. He had played his role to the best of our knowledge, the best that could be done of a professional banker. He had insisted on governance being put in place, and we suspect, because I like to use the word suspect, that it is because he had stood his ground on certain decisions that are not in favor of major shareholders of the bank that they felt hurt and thought he should be removed. This is against what we stand for. This is a bank where shareholders' funds is, where depositors' funds is almost 10 times shareholders' funds. Like I said earlier, our interest is to protect depositors and minority shareholders who have no voice in this business. We would not sit idle and continue to allow this to continue. I spoke to doc Dr. Oba Dudeko. He refused to grant my entreaties. I had calls to call two of his major shareholders to call him to ask the board not to take such decisions without the approval of the central bank. He refused to pick the calls of these, direct, these shareholders, not directors, that they appointed shareholders who are co-owners of the bank. I called him a second time and had on another, on another phone one of, the direct, one of the shareholders on that line listening to me begging Dr. Otudeko that he should not take that decision. He insisted on taking that decision. We hung up the phone. I sent that shareholder back to the office of Mr. Oba Otudeko to appeal to him to please suspend decision to remove the MD. He refused to see the shareholder. I feel we had done our best and that we would not allow so a shareholder who feels that he cannot subject himself to regulatory control and authority to remain as a director of the bank. So we didn't have any choice but to take this decision. As we speak, the chairman of the bank was queried, Ibukun Awoshika. We are yet to receive any response. In any case, I would imagine that that response is no longer necessary. On why we decided to spare the MDs, we felt that because we've worked with them from 2016 till now, what we saw was more of a breakdown of go on governance and insider abuse by shareholders 
and we felt that we needed to stamp our authorities to reappoint them and give them a chance to continue to remain executive directors, deputy managing directors, and managing director of this bank. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.